This show is a member of the Sorgatron Media Podcast Network. Find out more at sorgatronmedia.com. This show is brought to you by Slice on Broadway. Supporting Pittsburgh podcasting with the perfect pepperoni pizza, sliceonbroadway.com. And listeners like you, support this show at patreon.com slash awesomecast. Sidekick Media Services. We are your sidekick in business for social media, video production, and more. Find out more at sidekickmediaservices.com. time to get geeky get awesome it is the awesome cast episode 467 i'm mike sorg at sorgatron on the twitter here in the uh mayhem no sorgatron media studio we we're reminiscing about the mayhem studio uh a little bit earlier in that time that chilla um cut all electricity to it right before the show uh or was that during the show what was that it was right as we were about right to we're, get started that's right john chachilla's here he's a gadget guru at big bank international esquire and, and cutter of electricity and cutter of electricity. <laughs> yes, exactly. Also back in the studio is the Dutters. Hi. It's just all kinds of things. Really? I'm not going to try mentioning anymore. No, I just stop <laughs> things everywhere. No, just things everywhere. Mm-hmm. Zombies, you know. But did I see like a zombie at like a Honda dealership? Was that a thing I yeah. saw? It was Wait, a fundraiser. Just, okay, because I'm just like, are we doing, are we doing like live spots at 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 at, at Honda dealerships? Just, we just just show up places. It okay. was a karaoke contest. Oh, okay. Buy a car, get a zombie. Yeah, ah. <laughs> it's a bogo. Uh, and also back with us, as if he he's a guest with us to promote if he if he still had a podcast, who he would have as a guest, John Carmen. Uh, I'm not prepared to promote that, but <laughs> that was a fun topic we came up. I'm with just two saying you're ago. a person that used to have a podcast. I used, I am a person, and that used we to have wonder a who you would you would interview these I'm days. I'm the guy on the couch next to Dutters. Yes, so that's pretty exciting for me right now. Yep, I didn't know she'd be here, so I'm Surprise. super happy about that. Breaking <laughs> the trend, right? What was the trend? The, I think that she wasn't here when you were. That is that has been the trend. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's been really disappointing, and honestly, it's it's destroyed our relationship yep. so we oh, no okay. longer speak oh okay <laughs> except for on the show on the show okay it's a treaty we just come public up with. appearances yeah <laughs> <laughs> everything's great nothing with a zombie you know yeah uh also producer missy is in the house as well as uh apprentice michael is with us as well he's off there he is there's his hand for you guys on video <laughs> yeah. he's hanging out learning learning as i push all the buttons over here the hard way of not to do your podcast. Uh, <laughs> so that is my first role. It's like, hey, you want to start a podcast? Don't do anything that I do right now. <laughs> so, actually, literally, somebody did ask, I want to start a podcast. Can you help me? I'm like, yes. Um, have 10 ideas for podcasts. Get a microphone. Talk. Do them. That's yep. it. So, well, do, yeah, see if do, it works. And do see if it works. Five before you put anything out there. Yeah, exactly. It's like, like, see if it works. You've never talked to the microphone before? Do that. And find out if you have a podcast is what it is. If you're just like, you know, somebody trying to do this thing, you know, now if you're like a company trying to do this thing, I got a lot more rules for you. Uh, mm. So that's a lot of them. And, and we break half of them. Um, anyways, but anyways, this is the awesome cast. Uh, we have been podcasting for a good long time now. Jeez, I think we're creeping up on 10 years. If I have my, my dates right. I'm going to let Missy do the anniversaries because I screwed it up a couple years ago. Uh, anyways, uh, you can check us out at awesomecast.com uh, where you can find uh, all of our back catalog and some old interviews. Oh, hey, we pulled over the awesome chat interviews. You might have got some weird updates in your um, iTunes or something. Uh, all of the awesome chat interviews are uh, uh, got pulled over into the main feed. So if you want to go back through the catalog there and check out a lot of the old conversations, because we're really kind of folding it back in with, you know, we had Matt Stroud with Post Industrial, who we actually ended up kind of interviewing Chilla in, for, in the long run. <laughs> I really liked him as a guest. We he should was, bring him back. He was good. We completely threw out the format, but it was a lot of fun. Mm-hmm. So he was just like asking about like what you're doing with, like how, like I learned about how your, your home assistants basically like monitor your, your child and it's it was fascinating, but it's it's not necessarily they monitor him. I don't want to seem like that. I've replaced babysitting with that, but it helps. It's, it's, they they've definitely 
change the way we interact with the house. Anyways, he goes into detail on that last episode, and I, I encourage everybody to go back if you didn't listen to that. Drone uh, parenting. Drone, drone parenting. Ooh. It's, it's, it's well, no so, longer helicopter parenting. Yeah. No, you don't have to actually have a helicopter anymore, which... <laughs> Drones are cheaper. Yeah, there's it's less of a barrier to entry now. <laughs> Fantastic. That's and that's progress. Also, awesome cast on the Twitter, uh, Facebook. We have a great awesome cast Facebook group where a lot of you are dropping in there and uh, 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 giving us a lot of uh, thoughts and stories and everything throughout the week. Please subscribe and rate us on your favorite podcast app and watch video versions on Facebook and YouTube. And uh, of course, please ask your home device, uh, your Google Home, your Amazon Echo or whatnot to play the Awesome Cast podcast. Another way that you can get us. And we're here every Tuesday at Awesome Cast Facebook Live. A lot of other platforms. And if you're on any of those other platforms, please uh, come on over to the <laughs> come on over to the Awesome Cast uh, Facebook so you can be part of the chat room, just like uh, Brandon in Kansas City and Dave Potter uh, in the chat right now. Um, and if you uh, catch us later and have anything to say about this episode, please hit us up on Twitter at AwesomeCast with the hashtag AC467 and continue the conversation. Thank you to our audio partners, the405media.com. They're streaming us every weekday, as well as uh, over at Post Industrial Audio at postindustrial.com, sharing the great Pittsburgh podcast and helping us out. Uh, thank you to our Patreon supporters, patreon.com slash AwesomeCast. Our friends at the Coffee Club $5 level uh matt weller john diggy de gore and john carmen still supporting the show yeah i'm here <laughs> thank you are you, uh, are you at the wooden, I'm nick, wooden nickel level <laughs> you want me to just pay you now or? <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. that's fine that's fine and also thank you fan of the show dollar our longest run, running uh patreon supporter michael fedor who my favorite fedor is yes you're, <laughs> <laughs> his next podcast because you because you, you connected him and met, met, met his brother. Yes. Well, you met him before, haven't you? Yeah, but I didn't know. You didn't know the I connection. I didn't know they were brothers. Mm -mm. Mm, I learned a thing. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> it's like on uh, Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. It's like, da -da. So dun, many dun, Patton dun. Oswalds. <laughs> so many Patton Oswalds and Cree and blue guys. and Anyways, you can support the show and aliens at patreon.com slash awesomecast. Aliens. Uh, let's get into our awesome things of the week. <laughs> Chilla, what do you got over here? What do I have? What do you have? So I have an app location for Mac OS, and there's a couple of these around for iOS. And it's called what? Make Pass. Make Pass. So if do you use like the passes in your wallet on your device? In my what, what do you like, mean? you like have a movie ticket or like a ticket? Yeah, to, yeah, like AMC like Steel City and Starbucks, Con or, and yeah, they yeah. show up in your ticket wallet. Ticketmaster, right? yeah, yeah. Well, this application lets you make your own passes mm. so you can take like the barcode off your library card or you Whoa. can take pretty much anything that's a qr code or a barcode or anything that's scannable as a picture mm -hmm. you set like the foreground and background colors any logo information whatever the graphic image you want up there and then you hit send a phone and you can even set like hey i want this pass to activate on such and such date um, you can give it a bunch of parameters and then it actually sends the pass off to your phone, which I thought was pretty darn cool. And it has different pass type templates, whether it's a boarding pass, a coupon, an event ticket, a store card, etc. Boarding pass. Yeah. So you, if you had like the QR code, I wonder if they would accept that with the security. Yeah, it's, um, it's well, it, it's the same as like the, basically you're taking like your boarding pass thing. I mean, like. Southwest, you want to make a, your own Southwest one, yeah. but they already have one, so you wouldn't. Really they already be... have one, so you don't necessarily need it for that. But are if you it's... talking about maybe like like a, an airline that maybe doesn't have that feature, Correct. or a bus, like maybe a bus. Spirit Air or something like that? Yeah, yes. a bus. Yeah, would make sense too. Or I'd have to see it in action because I mean, we go to the gym and I use my keys, and my boyfriend uses his phone and then stands there for an extra thirty seconds trying to get it to scan so tell him to turn his brightness up to 100 percent before Ooh, we scan we'll try that. yeah that's actually what um when you're when they're checking people through like i know it's southwest they're mm -hmm. like turn your brightness up okay and actually the wallet itself will do that automatically but if you're doing it in the app it becomes a problem mm -hmm. so i'm always worried about like the app going to the background or whatever mm -hmm. so a lot of times even for like even i flew delta recently and i so i open up the app, grab the boarding pass, yeah. and then screenshot it yeah, I'll do that and put it in too. my photos app because I was like, 
well, if the pass goes to the background or I get logged out of the app or mm-hmm. whatever, I'm going to be fumbling. But that's what the wallet's right. for. So. Right, but that's what the wallet's for. Yeah, if for. it's anything else. So, um, if if yeah. it's something you can't throw in a wallet, like uh, we were, we used, we went to Cleveland last night for, for WWE and it, we was with StubHub and it didn't have a wallet app. And then we got like these seat upgrades because they ended up like tarping off our area or something for TV. <laughs> so it was this like fast ticket like fast seat something app that i've never seen and it looked like like the app looked like it was still made for like the iphone 4 and they never upgraded like the size of the buttons you know like mm-hmm. the keyboard's mm-hmm. too huge and i'm like on a freaking eight plus right <laughs> and i was, was just it like, flash seats yeah flash yeah. seats that's the one uh, at the rocket mortgage field house i think i got the name right i don't know it's still the gun to me i don't go up there that <laughs> often um but anyways uh but um yeah so it was just like it would be nice to turn that into a thing I could stick in my wallet, right? And that's what this app would would do practically, pretty much. Okay. Turn any, yeah, turn anything into a, a wallet, whatever. They I dig call it. A tile or. Whatever. I keep losing my library card too. For ninety nine cents, it's probably worth the try it out and see what you think. Mm. It doesn't let me buy it on the iPad. No, because it's for Mac OS. Uh, oh, it's Mac OS. So there's only there's a couple other ones for ios this is the only one for mac os and i kind of like this okay. from the the ui perspective and it's to me it's easier to grab a screenshot of something or snip something out of an mm-hmm. email mm-hmm. and throw it into here but it's sh- it ships it off to your phone all right well um before i get to my techie thing um katie what is your awesome thing i don't have anything oh it's been time. a rough week it's been a rough week <laughs> We'll give you a minute. Oh, thank I'll give you. you some time here. You're oh, next. Uh, <laughs> so, so I've been I've been poking at something now. I've been um, doing streaming. We we actually since we were we were up in the game with some of our stuff. We were doing the wrestling productions this this year, and um, we picked up we we got like the high end like Vimeo set up for live streaming. And I remember we looked at things like this like back before and back when we talk to um the one guy from live stream before they got bought by vimeo and you have you know remember your little mevo camera and everything right mm-hmm. um so i stick cam was my favorite stick cam that's right but uh well of course vimeo live stream have come together and we've been using a lot of the platforms like vhx and the vimeo for vod and everything and uh and of course you know their live streaming component now in vimeo at least so it turns out when you hey and this is not cheap by the way <laughs> to get on the platform we are now it actually includes its own software for streaming which is kind of cool and uh, so we're we're exploring this as a as maybe a, a replacement for some of some of our productions, uh, and it has a lot of the features that that the higher end um, versions of like even what we use here in the studio um, um, does. But we we still got to see how it kind of integrates with the hardware we have. But Chile, the part that I thought was interesting in here, and I got to see if I can find it. one. We could mix. So oh, ideally, there it is. ideally, we can mix Mevo cameras along with this Hmm. and seemingly when as i was reading through this if you have a 4k camera you can do the mevo thing of cropping the pre pre predefined location cropping apparently will happen just with a 4k camera now i was suspect of that sensor in the mevo camera Mm -hmm. remember because i'm like well you know it's a little one but it's 4k how great can that be it's like taking a 4k with your cell phone right like Mm -hmm. how good is that 4k going to be and but now like let's say i have like a crazy black magic 4k camera like we used on that boxing shoot a couple months ago for uh for uh i think we we're on ufc fight pass or something like what if i had one of those for a production and we're only streaming 1080 and maybe just capturing you know local for for post or something i can now just set one of those up as my hard cam and do the multi-shot thing nice like it, that is a really it's an cool easy feature. ui to get to get going it I, is i didn't feel like it was very complex and it's it, well it well that was through the app and everything and mm-hmm. this is doing it through like an entire like switcher thing like what we use here so mm-hmm. imagine that integrated in what we do um so that's kind of a nice thing and there's some options in here like half the features like we're not even going to touch for 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 the productions we're doing can it like, do 360 can it do 360 i did not see anything for a 360 the software we have now can do 360 i've tested it but what the heck? We haven't we haven't found a practical use for it, mm-hmm. right? Who's who's sitting with a, a VR headset on, now? More people now are. My favorite was it's, when you used to do the it was the wrestling show, and you would have the opposing side up on a fake TV. 
up behind them. Oh, what? Didn't you do one where you had like a bunch of people in the studio? Yeah. And you would, didn't you, was it, was it 360 or what did you do to make it where like you had a, there wasn't a real TV on the wall, <laughs> but you placed like an image Oh yeah, because, the, because it's just video. like, it's, so basically it was a 360 thing and, and, and you kind of learn how to deal with it as a flat surface in editing. And if you put an image in there and shaped it correctly, it would look like it formed right into the wall. So, I mean, that's what we did when we did the Scarehouse one. That's how we, like, put the logo at the bottom mm-hmm. and everything like that to cover up the tripod, right? Um, so, it, it's a lot easier than it sounds, actually. It's just it's just formatting into it. And so, um, WWE would do that where, like, you you're, they have the interview on the one side, and then you turn your head the other way, and there's, like, footage that they're talking about just projected on the wall. One of those they shot here in Pittsburgh in, like, a room at, at the PPG Arena. You know, it's random because... They, you could see all the courts because mm-hmm. <laughs> you can't hide anything. <clears throat> but, um, but no, I'm excited for this and exploring kind of what we can do with this. And, um, and again, we kind of have an odd setup with the Black Magic uh, hardware that we have and everything. So it really, I'm just looking for something that does the graphical stuff and maybe brings in an extra camera or something like this. The uh, Wi-Fi cameras and 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 a browser-based uh, situation for this. So um, looking for this, and we have some really interesting streaming. Uh, productions coming up in the next couple of months actually so looking forward to get those help those get a little bit smoother um, which is always a goal for this so hopefully and again that is the um, if you want to look at that if it's a Vimeo live stream studio 6 live production switcher software this is probably a little high end for people out there that are doing um, kind of more uh, hobbyist video production I guess I should say um, like I would still kind of look at your Wirecast and VMix solutions probably, uh, but this might be a n- nice a next step up uh, for those out there. But Katie, did I give you enough room? <laughs> yeah. Okay. I got a smart jacket. Smart jacket. <laughs> From Levi's. It's a trucker jacket. It's a jean jacket, and it's the future of technology and clothing. <laughs> <laughs> it's amazing. Uh, it's a Sherpa, Sherpa trucker jacket with a jacquard by Google. Seamlessly merges iconic style with innovative technology. So there's a little tag tucked inside the sleeve. And you got a whole bunch of little things you can swipe and doodles. Uh, you can talk to uh, My Day, ask your Google Assistant to give you real-time updates about sports, news, and weather. Or always together, it'll let you know when you leave your jacket or your phone behind. <laughs> I, okay, uh, Missy, I need something with this. I don't know about a jean jacket, but <laughs> can I just have this integrated? You could probably just take the doohick off of the jean jacket. <laughs> just put it in every jacket. Because how many times have I left my jacket behind somewhere? <laughs> Jeez. Perfect. This will that'll help you. Instead so, of a tile, just go all in with this. Yeah, exactly. And you so, can play music, take photos. Technology got rid of truckers, mm-hmm. and we gave them jackets. Yes. Okay. Well, they were cold when they had to live outside. <laughs> <laughs> it's the homeless trucker jacket. Wow. <laughs> But, but so th- this is kind of their. Um, I mean, this is kind of the the uh, the the tactical. What that? What the heck was that? The Scott the Scotty, Scotty vest. vest. Yeah, Scotty vest. Scotty vest. Yeah. Uh, so they're so it's gotten into the name brands now, basically, right? Yeah, it's so. yeah, it's it's a it's going to be a daily life thing. Look at this thing go, and then it also tells you when your uh, your car, your ride share shows up, and mm-hmm. tells you who's driving it. It's nice. <laughs> Jeez. Because you no longer what? have a truck. No, yeah, you gotta get rides everywhere. <laughs> it's really just syncing into like a phone app or something, right? Oh yeah, like, it's uh, not, like, Jacquard is the uh, phone app, right? Right. So it's not like we didn't put like that much technology into this, but like just enough. You know, can, disclaimers contains one jacket, one Jacquard tag, and one micro USB charging cable. Ta-da. You know, they're just like there's a place for this. Like yeah. there, there's there's a holder. There's it's a place on your to back. Stick this. It's, what's that? You said there's a place for this. I said it's on your back. Oh yes, in this stylist jean jacket so when you need to complete that canadian tuxedo <laughs> go with levi we got something for you <laughs> we got something for you men's ladies it doesn't matter it's nope. not cheap no no uh, no it's a 200 dollar jacket so. well then if it's lined it's 250 oh uh-huh. wow we need your sherpa your fuzzes keep you warm <laughs> john carmen oh finally you fi- <laughs> finally oh well, yeah i got <laughs> I have to put the segue before the segue. Right, you had to buy time for. I had to buy shit. time. Mm-hmm. So, so, I mean, we had a lot going on. It's it's really. I know it's been a while, but it's really hard to run a podcast, Carmen. <laughs> <laughs> 
times. You know, I never really ran it. I just kind of did the tech Things stuff. just kind of happened, yeah. right? You just like the microphones work and things happen in front of me. I How just you... knew there were a lot of drag queens. In yeah, I used to, I learned a lot about the drag queen That's what I'm world. About. It was educational. Yeah. Imagine now. So yeah. um, there's this is more of a local update, but there's a, uh, a book called uh, Pizza Walk Pittsburgh, a mm. pizza guide to Pittsburgh covering <laughs> the last 10 years of pizza culture in Pittsburgh. And it just got fully funded yeah. yesterday on, uh, on Kickstarter. So uh, we can link to that in the show notes. And um, they I think they still have seven days to go if you want to back this book, get a copy of it. And they mention a lot of the local pizza places. I mean, it's probably a good read if you like, if you're interested in pizza and pizza culture in, in any city. Um, but it follows the modern pizza culture as it, as it has occurred over the last 10 years. And one big section is on Slice. Ooh. And uh, Rico, the owner, said the book captures Pittsburgh pizza perfectly. So they really like alliteration over there. They've been Slice. listening to our ads. And... Uh, <laughs> Yeah, yeah. So that's uh, Dan Tallarico is the author of that, who is uh, writing and printing it. And uh, he has uh, his blog is Pizza Walk With Me, local pizza guy. And I think he's a friend of the show as well. Absolutely. Pizza journalist, I should say. A pizza journalist. That yeah. needs to be on somebody's card. Mm-hmm. I'm sure card. it's on one person's card. At, at least <laughs> that guy. Uh, <laughs> anyways, that's awesome. But hey, speaking of Slice on Broadway, they're our friends. They feed us. On this podcast, uh, supporting a Pittsburgh podcasting with a perfect pepperoni pizza. See, I don't know where they got that, Carmen. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Did you do that? Did, did you I, do that to him? What did I? Did, did I, you? Did you create the alliteration? Yeah, we created that. Okay. Yeah, we've we've been doing it for a while. So while. he's yeah, he's running with it. Yeah, I mean, I, you know, it's it's Pittsburgh, great pizza, Pittsburgh pizza. Perfect That's why you have the pop pepper, filter. Perfect pepperoni pizza with a pop filter. That's why I hide behind this pop filter, for, especially during this commercial. Uh, anyways, right up the street, the original up here in Beachview in Carnegie, PA on, his, PA on your way out to the airport, East End and PNC Park, home of the Pittsburgh Pirates. Not that there's a lot going on there right now. Uh, <laughs> but go check them out, our good friends, and some good pizza. I know uh, somebody, oh, wasn't uh, uh, somebody, was it their gym or something in the East End? And there's a slice right around the corner, Katie. Weren't we, were we both getting those pictures from somebody? lately and they're like i think i made a good decision because two doors down is a slice on broadway so yeah, i wish there was one near my gym because i'd go to pizza monday if it was slice there you go yeah so check them out slice on broadway.com and let them know the awesome cast <clears throat> sent you hey uh let's check in real quick and see what's going on with uh i actually was checking in with chachi on his uh uh, thousand one uh game journey at the game journey.com and i understand that they're going to get a little more wordy um this is Chachi is like like really got into like journalism right now. Like he's he's really digging into it. He's like he writes about pizza. He, no, he's not. No, he's <laughs> writing about video games. Oh, John, other kind uh, of <laughs> so uh, he's up a, a really big into the Super Nintendo era with Secret of Mana, Harvest Moon, and uh, and Final Fantasy. I don't know. The numbers get really fuzzy in the Super Nintendo era, uh, three and six, depending on what country you were in. And I can see it really obscure stuff, but this is on the big list of I woke up Siri of games you should play. That's the one games you should play before you die. Go check out what he's doing over at that, the game Uh Plug our buddy of the show, Chachi, over there. All right. So my mom, <laughs> your mom, my mom has contributed uh, to the show this week, uh, apparently. And, um, is she writing in the show notes? Yes. No. 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 She was in the. She was in the awesome gas Facebook group. It's all coffee. We're. All, we're. I'm losing my voice over here. I might have to have one of you guys take over for me in a minute. Um, but anyways, so uh, I was excited when I found uh, several weeks ago that there's a Roomba iRobot Roomba uh, mower that I really want because it's like. I think I probably have the perfect size yard for something like that. Um, but there's apparently also uh, a. a, a Robot named Beetle. That's a uh, that's Beetle without the last e. That's it's so an cool. autonomous robot that hunts down dog poop and picks it up for mm-hmm. you. Much like my dog will hunt down the cat poop and pick it up for you. Yeah, <laughs> I bet it does a better job than Beetle too. Yeah. So uh, yeah, it's a little. It looks like a little tractor in this picture, apparently. Um, and I love, I love how how there's just a woman just frolicking with her dog. 
you know, in the background here, just like, well, it's just mindfully taking care of the poop. Uh, <laughs> this is amazing. This is the close up shots are pretty good, too. Uh, let's see. Uh, it has a sealed container inside where poop is contained for disposal. <laughs> you like articles with the word poop. This is for you. Look at this. Look at this. So here's all the uh, tracking it does for your yard and everything. So uh, I love I love if you're on audio, this presentation at whatever, you know, whatever this this uh, this uh, uh, uh show off event is it's like their booth and they have some some fake carpet fake grass carpeting and some little pieces of poop <laughs> you didn't say fake poop it's probably I'm uncomfortable fake poop. that you didn't say fake poop you said I, fake it's unconfirmed grass. look i mean the dog is challenging it now uh <laughs> oh good there's a video <laughs> so uh, but no this is seriously like something that could be pretty helpful for you in your city that or is 100 suburban useful. yeah uh, uh, area like I love the the mower idea. I would put it in my neighbor's yard, and then you know because obviously, like if my neighbor caught me mowing in his yard, yes, you know that could be a problem. But if yeah. I put a robot in his yard, I could feign ignorance. <laughs> well, the robot didn't know, right? I didn't. I don't know anything about this robot. You know, or you, you could say it's your robot, and it must become self aware and yeah. decided his lawn needs decided mowing. that you needed some help. I, over I actually there. don't have lawn, so he can keep the robot. I just don't want the mosquitoes. Okay. Fair. Fair. Mm-hmm. Well, Fair. well, we were figuring out uh, um, when Missy was telling about this one, and I love there's definitely shark robots uh, ads all around this too. Um, <laughs> we we want the boa robot and we want the poop robot and and we want to see if they'll fight in the yard. Ooh. And have our own robot wars. Don't I've I have a pool robot. I have gotten in so many fights with that robot. With the pool robot. Yeah. Never sober, but. It, they're well, aggra- they're aggressive. Well, it started with you. I don't know why it has to, you know, give you trouble. I'm not I'm not yeah, I'm not innocent. I'm not saying I didn't start some of the fights, but <laughs> they can get ugly. Well, at least our US military is uh is keeping up. Um as I know, I swear every uh, I I think every one of you out here, we all shared this. We all like this. We all cuz it just resonates. <laughs> Uh, the U.S. military <laughs> will no longer use floppy disks to coordinate nuke launches. And when I say floppy disk, that's the big one. <laughs> it's, the, it's the five and a quarter. It's the five and a quarter. When that's, they were still actually floppy. That's that's what I played Oregon Trail on. The kind you um, bet your friends you can get someone's panties for. What? 16 candles. Anyone? No. It's been a while. It has been. It while. has been a while. I still watch it. <laughs> it's not. It is not in my regular rotation. Um, but uh, yeah. So again, you know, it's secure. Uh, they were running it on what was it, an old IBM Series uh, One uh, SAX computer. Um, you know, I guess if it's secure and it worked for so long, it sure. So I wonder what the read. So like. SSDs have mm-hmm. a finite life for read write, mm-hmm. especially on the right side. How new are these floppies? Like, I wonder how long. Like, what's the differential? Like, does a floppy last longer than an SSD? Maybe through a nuclear winter. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe that's the reason. Is, I don't know. Is anyone manufacturing floppies? Um, probably someone exclusively for high for the military. High right. tax dollars mm-hmm. for the military. They right? probably pay more than an SSD um, per sure. floppy. Absolutely. I They're military-grade floppies. <laughs> military-grade <laughs> floppies. That sounds like a title. Um, yeah. Anyways, uh, Chris Whitlatch has a bunch of uh, uh, extra stuff in here, too. Always keeping us on some of the uh, uh, fun gaming things going on. Uh, he, I saw this around a bit, too. Uh, the Monty Python Black Knight statue talks and features flesh wound action. <laughs> so it's detachable and again back to old movies if you're not familiar with monty python and holy grail i do believe it is on netflix or amazon uh right now so you can go check that out i think i at least saw life of Brian it, yeah i saw that on netflix yeah. but what are, i mean if we put it on a stand it's not an action figure it's a statue well i mean but if you yank its arms off then it's an action figure that's an action <laughs> yeah i had a c-3po that did that uh, yeah exactly uh it looks like uh it looks like it's it's magnets and every he-man figure mm-hmm. every he-man figure yes every 
Uh, so thanks for sharing that. This is the, um, let's see if there's a available right here. Let's see if they got the official retail of it. So you guys will have a link in the show notes as well. Uh, also the tough mutter lawn founder, the, that's the, the tough, uh, 5k obstacle course craziness. Um, actually, uh, a friend of ours in wrestling, uh, just participated in one and he was like sick for a week afterwards and was still dealing with it because he, he had yelled, he had yelled at somebody in, in the ring and I thought he was going all Batman on me, you know, <laughs> like Christian Bale, Batman. I'm just like, what was that? You know? Um, but, uh, the Tough Mudder founder launches an immersive video gaming experience in London. It's an electronic theater that offers Londoners the chance to play, collaborative video games in an interactive digital room so um not as earthy probably as the other thing that he's they're doing. not actually running tough mutter courses no 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 no, no. The, this this is more of a, a big interactive like we're talking vr we're talking interactive uh experience rooms and everything like that we got a accompanying video here for you guys on audio with us if it loads yeah. to show you uh so but I mean, that's the thing. Like, well, what I was talking about the other day, like, it seems like now's the time to say, "Hey, let's go on a vacation in New York City to just like hit all these interesting interactive rooms." Because a lot of these, like, Ghostbusters VR experiences and things like that. I think, I think the Avengers uh, VR experience is up there now too. The damage control one that's been going around. Um, so, like, I mean, these are popping up, and it's kind of like you know, kind of like how we're getting escape rooms everywhere, right? Is you're going to see like these now. These are this actually reminds me of a Black Mirror episode because there are these, um, you the one that they're showing has you know these these sensors on on your hat. They're motion tracking. They're hats. motion tracking hats, and then there's like like arcade games on all four walls projecting on the walls like like Pac Man and stuff like that. So and you're like kind of following it with your head. So that's a pretty cool one. I haven't seen that application before. So. And we'll have a link to that for you guys to see the video in the chat room, too. All right. Uh, as I'm losing my voice, uh, Katie, can you tell me about Sidekick Media Service? I hear we do some things around here. You do some things. You are <laughs> Sidekick <laughs> Media, from sporting events to music video productions to conferences and everywhere in between. The team at Sidekick Media Services has you covered. As a sidekick to your superhero project, what next big thing can they help you with? Find out more at SidekickMediaServices.com. Just like the commercial we play. <laughs> yeah, I, know. I was like, oh, do my commercial voice. It was a live read. Thank you. Thank you. I'm, I'm, I'm losing it here. And I have another show to do after this, too. Um, let's get into the, the stories here. Carmen, tell me what Walmart's up to. Uh, well, I think I predicted that we would have our first uh, theft for when, the, what was it, Amazon started delivering inside your house. Oh, geez. Uh, I and I video. haven't heard of any thefts involving amazon delivery but i i mean we have some shady activity but i really think now that walmart is putting your groceries in your fridge someone's gonna steal something <laughs> you're gonna uh, come home to a half-eaten banana <laughs> yeah someone's gonna take something mm. at least a banana you know we're gonna have a banana theft this walmart direct to fridge delivery is available in three cities uh somewhere somewhere and pittsburgh <laughs> oh good is one of them and oh good really excited about this i will not do it mm -mm. i can put my own groceries away but you know there are times when i wish i had someone listen to do man that. i can't even get them to deliver to my house they'll deliver here to the office but not three blocks away to my house really so yeah you're gonna have to put the fridge in the office uh, that, well <laughs> i mean we have a fridge here but we'll just have to get our own too uh just you know to, to then take them home i guess uh but yeah we, and there's a video of this that was on the facebook um, and, and, and it shows like apparently you'll get a notification and can see a live video from them holding the phone as they're entering your house. Right. You need to have the you need to get the level home smart lock or the Nortec garage door controller. They'll install it for free, though. And then I think it's it's about twenty dollars a month mm -hmm. monthly fee, uh, minimum thirty dollars for groceries. But that's fair. Someone's coming to your house. Um, I guess you can't tip. I don't know. But. Not for me. I don't. Um, I could see like I could see a bachelor doing this. You know, mm -hmm. someone who doesn't have stuff. Do you think I'll get notifications on my jean jacket? <laughs> <laughs> then it all comes together, right? <laughs> so, um, I I think not for anyone with dogs. No, 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 no. no. That way, there's got to be a policy against that. Like in general, if mm -hmm. you have dogs, you are disqualified from right. using this service. Because I mean, just geez, the 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 issues on that alone liability, would be an issue. Sure. Yeah, the liabilities on that alone. Um, 
thing. Yeah. I, it, it's like, oh, hey, you know, it, is this them trying to one up each other? I guess they're really in direct, direct competition with, with Amazon, the way we're seeing their services pop up. Best Buy now has same day deli- next day or same I think it's day? next day next day delivery mm-hmm. I mean yeah there's it's a they have to it's a rush to fill your fridge <laughs> <laughs> you can get your fridge delivered by be- by Best Buy next day can I get a free and then you can have Walmart come over that afternoon and, sh- and stock it up and then if Walmart gets there a little early it's gonna be awkward <laughs> where do you want this Will Best Buy actually fill the stuff into the fridge if Walmart just Best leaves Buy it behind? Company. We're not being paid to fill the fridge. We listen. <laughs> we'll just set it around the fridge, on top of the fridge, and be like, "Well, we did our, we did as best as we could, as as dictated." Uh, we'll see. We'll see. Um, uh, Chilla, I understand you are having fun with Overwatch, but uh, I, 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 I've I did seen see some so many, negative stuff about. I've that. seen so many people post negative, and maybe I'm not a serious enough player because I am a very casual every. Well, you're weeks. like me and and John. We enjoy like Fortnite on our phones, right? I, we, I think we're not considered the hardcore gamers. Yeah. Um, the, so, all the hardcore gamers are on PC for Fortnite. Yeah, <clears throat> but obviously. I, the Overwatch, I feel like there's a decent enough following too on console, as much as there is. Maybe I'm wrong. As much as there is PC, mm-hmm. but so I picked up Overwatch for the Switch. Um, it was kind of a bummer because it was down the morning it released for like Overwatch server updates, but it was down across the board. It wasn't just <laughs> for the Switch. Um, I fired it up. I got some free stuff for pre-ordering. I started playing. Um, I felt like it was cool and i actually liked like the tilt gyro motion kind of aiming a little bit i only play with a couple different characters Mm -hmm. but i had fun with it and people were complaining you know it it doesn't look as good on the tv screen i can't tell you i mean i rare unless christopher and i are playing mario kart together i mean the switch is getting passed back and forth on the couch So I rarely have it. I must be like the oddball. Here's the question, too. Are you playing Overwatch on like a 4K Xbox in comparison? Right? Yeah, I am. That's probably who's complaining about it. Because remember, like when we're talking about like video game reviewers or something, they're like, I got my stacked out, you know, (laughs) PC or Xbox One X with my 4K television. And then we can go to the Switch, which doesn't even have 4K. I'd say doesn't even yeah. seriously. I'd be surprised you even know. if in in like undocked mode, it's probably like 720p. And they did they did trim it down to 30 frames per second. Yeah, but on that small screen, I mean, and th- what, when it's on the, when it's on the small screen, it's running 720. When it's on the big screen, it's running 1080. Is that correct? I don't know. I don't think I'd be surprised if they were even trying to push 1080 on the big screen. Right. I think I think they do, but still, like that's not what your high-end full-on like it, it's running it on half the computer if you compare it to the other consoles so i mean and i feel like overwatch was built for something else and it's just been ported everywhere so i'm sure the code behind it's definitely a mess oh absolutely and i and i hear at blizzcon we may be getting word of an overwatch 2 but um which is i think in november well hopefully on all the consoles since they're just sweeten the yeah this on the switch right but i I mean, for a game that you can pick, it's it, to me, it's like a Mario Kart type game. Mm-hmm. I can pick it up. I can play one match and be done <clears throat> in like five minutes. And then I can move on if I want to. And the Switch makes that even better because I can take it with me. So I'm not tethered to a TV. Mm. But I must be the oddball out. Must be. Must be. Uh, Carmen, I think you got something about drones. Is that correct? Yeah, I thought you know someone's got to mention that uh, the wings delivery wing is uh, no, a Google offshoot of uh, Alphabet's offshoot of whatever, and uh, they uh, took flight for the first time in Virginia. They're delivering, I think, just snacks and healthcare products in a uh, town of Christianburg, Virginia, and they are now certified as a commercial air carrier, which allows them wow. to do that. Yeah. Um, it allows them to deliver to people who live miles away and uh, might not be able to uh, get to, I think it's, I don't want to say the wrong company, the wrong store that they partnered with, but Walgreens. I'm going to say, I think I think it's Walgreens, which is why snacks and uh, 
and care healthcare products. Hmm. Which is, I mean, right now, like, um, I know CVS is testing delivery for uh, prescriptions as well. Uh, I think UPS, you know, that the the really essential items that people need that might not have access to. So this is interesting because there's another delivery thing that's been happening here in Pittsburgh that apparently has gotten a little bit of controversy. Actually, Chachi is the first one I saw this from. He actually had an encounter with one of these uh, Starship six-wheel delivery oh. robots. And I think they're doing food delivery out in Oakland right now. And I think this is in association with the University of Pittsburgh because that's who I saw respond. Yep. So unfortunately, the issue is that... Uh, <clears throat> excuse me. Um... The issue is that when they go to the corner of the road, um, they, uh, they they line up in the curb cut. So when you're a wheel per, wheelchair individual, you can't use the curb cut. And this one this one lady was uh, talking about how she was literally stuck on Forbes Avenue because this robot was in the way and she couldn't get onto the sidewalk. <laughs> So, um, I and then I saw a follow up tweet by University of Pittsburgh saying that they have suspended the uh, the program, uh, citing uh, fixing this issue, this technical issue. <coughs> so, uh, and it's a little, um, geez, what is that? Maybe two feet tall, uh, robot, you know, in uh, a little six wheel thing. Is it's like what we've seen before, where it's like got the top that looks like it probably pops up, and that's where. Um, your stuff. I don't know if it's just like crossing the street with people in this video here. So it's like a half height R two unit. Yeah, it, it is. I mean, it looks like a droid, a droid of some sort, right? Mm -hmm. Perfect for that new Star Wars trailer that popped up last night. Um, I watched that this morning, by the way. That was great. Uh, so you can check it out. It's over at uh, Starship X Y Z. <laughs> so uh, that's the company that's doing it. And again, it looks like they're they're kind of in partnerships. Uh, with these um, local companies uh, doing this too, so we're just uh, calling everything Starship now, aren't we? Apparently, we're just rolling with it, right? Um, so Elon Musk. I mean, none of them are capable of interstellar travel, but we're just throwing the name out there. Is that the one, the, the Starship that, that he's talking about? Is that the one that I was reading that is supposed to be the connector between like Earth and the the Moon base that we're supposed to be building? Right. Yeah. Not interstellar travel, so it's just a spaceship. Yes, you you gotta you gotta leave our star system, right? Yeah, mm -hmm. you gotta leave this the 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 solar system, the system of this one star, for other stars. Jefferson for... Jefferson was the first to do this. They went directly from airplane to starship. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, we're just skipping over the spaceship. It's like Windows eight to Windows ten. Mm -hmm. What happened? What happened to Windows spaceship? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I think he was talking about Windows nine. <laughs> what is that? <laughs> Come on, Chilla. <laughs> what a dumb name, Chilla. It's Windows Spaceship. Windows. That's that's the next version. The next frontier. Somewhere there's a sign of uh, classified Windows Starship. <laughs> it's their code name. Somewhere in Microsoft up there in, in, in Redmond is, is this thing. So, uh, geez. What else we got here, uh, guys? Uh, anything else you want to touch on? Katie, do you have anything you want to... We didn't talk about up? the uh, Disney Plus... For Verizon, oh, a lot of Disney Plus options yeah. coming up. I don't have a good article. This one's so I, it was so it, the thing I saw coming around was that Disney Plus, if you upgrade to the, or have the Disney, or, I'm sorry, Verizon Unlimited plan, that you'll be getting it. Yeah, as part of it. Yeah, yeah. for uh, well, for a year, I think mm -hmm. for a year. Yeah, and that's yeah. six ninety nine a month. And uh, although not all Disney um, titles will be available all of the time, I, I don't know if they're doing that vault thing, mm -hmm. but I know that they said. For some reasons, like certain, like a lot of the Marvel movies won't be available immediately. Mm -hmm. Some things will have to come in and out of rotation. Uh, anything that you download, you can keep okay. indefinitely. So just oh. just download everything. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> just fill your iPad. Yeah, and like, then record them on the VHS. Yeah, <laughs> you're ready for this. You're ahead of the curve. Floppy disk. Yeah, the floppy, floppy disk. disk. When they were really floppy. And then you put them in the clamshell case VHSs, just like oh. you know back in the day, right? That's so nice. I see those. Aren't those tapes supposed to be going for like a good bid? And I see them for like a buck at the thrift shop. I don't know. I have a lot of questions when people are like, this is worth this much money. And then at some point someone had told me like a lot of the Beanie Babies that are worth a lot of money was because they sold on eBay 
for a lot of money because they were filled with drugs. <laughs> oh. And that's why a lot of times when you see Beanie Babies still being sold for a lot of money, you know, like, look, this guy sold his for blah, blah, blah. That's because it was filled with drugs. <laughs> I learned something. Yeah. Beanie Babies full of drugs. Yes. So. I have like 100 Beanie Babies in my attic. I'm going to go open them up now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's they're how people ship them and sell them. It's, it's like, they were really expensive. It's mm-hmm. like the mystery box of stuff that you can get on eBay. The dog loves them for some reason. <laughs> <laughs> I should give them, them the kittens. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> just beanie babies full of catnip it'll be just fine it'll be just fine did you did you see the marvel podcast thing oh they're doing podcasts too yeah so How about I, I didn't really i didn't know i've by never the, by the way do, uh, follow up before we get to that wwe's podcast network is starting and i think we I talked about it. i had a conversation with their legal team because of that uh but <laughs> The uh, uh, a friend of the Wrestling Mayhem show is starting the first podcast, Corey Graves. Cool. So that's uh, coming up here soon, and I'll be subscribed to that at the end of the month. Uh, but what's Marvel doing? So I, I guess they've done this before. They did Wolverine, The Long Night. Which... Yeah, that was uh, an Audible thing. I No, a Stitcher thing. Was it a Stitcher thing? Yeah, it was a Stitcher story podcast, I think. So they're partnering up with Sirius XM and Pandora, and they're doing 10 episodes... The first four focus on Wolverine, Hawkeye, Black Widow, and Star Lord, mm-hmm. and then it turns into the four superheroes teaming up. So it sounds like a pretty cool concept, other than the fact that well, as long as it's on Pandora free, mm-hmm. but I don't have Sirius XM. But it, I don't know. It sounds like a cool concept, and the thing that I like is you don't have to worry about them ever switching out an actor. I guess you could it'd be a voice actor, but. I feel like you don't have to worry about like the whole movie thing of, hey, this actor is going to change or they're going to get rid of this person. They can keep the stories going pretty much forever. Mm-hmm. So, and even the uh, the long night one. I, I'm looking at the description for that one. This was the one they did at the tail end of 2017. It was 10 episodes following uh, agents tracking a legendary mutant as he hunts down a serial killer in a fictional Alaskan town. And then I, that's ah, really going mm-hmm. who could it be? Who could it be? Mm. Um, interesting. So, and again, never really kind of sat down and listened to these, but um, but also that was included in the Stitcher Premium at the time too. Mm, that's why I didn't listen to it. Yeah, I think these are going to be on Pandora free. Okay. Hey, something to bring you into the platform, right? So that's how I'm listening. Yeah, I was just giving somebody crap for using Pandora at a wrestling show. And not paying for it and hearing the commercials <laughs> <laughs> before a show. I'm like, I have your phone. Oh, I thought it was Spotify. So, uh, hi, wheels. Let's see. Yeah. <laughs> Anyways, and my document went away. Where are we on time here? Yeah, a few minutes still. Um, let me refine my, my document here. Uh, let's see. So, there was another. Hey, guys, there's another retro console. <laughs> Whoa. By the way, one up uh, uh, arcade cabinets has a has a final fight one out now. So, but I, I still feel like I'm going to break those um, controllers. You, have any of you had laid hands on those in the WalMarts? I've seen like a, a, a Mortal Kombat and Street Fighter one was set up one time. I think like Century Three or something. Or the like half height arcade. The half height arcade one. Costco's yeah. been having them. Okay. And I played the one that was like Centipede and a couple old Atari mm-hmm. games. And I saw this time when I walked through, they now have the Mortal Kombat one, but I didn't get to stop by. The centipede one, the old Atari retro, mm. worked pretty well. They have a Marble Madness one. Uh, no, I don't think so. Mm. But they do have like a Ninja Turtles one that has the two arcade games with four players. Mm. Uh, they have like a a, a Capcom uh, a Capcom Marvel one that has like Marvel superheroes, and I think it's the X Men fighting game, okay. like the pre X Men versus Street Fighter stuff. Um, but anyways, the, the the thing that I found here. Uh, a company named Analog is basically doing a. I mean, it looks like a Game Boy. Basically, it looks like a really nice uh, uh, Game Boy SP, or actually more Game Boy Color kind of thing, uh, but with a really nice LCD screen and everything. Uh, Two hundred dollar pocket, and it's actually going to be capable to play. Uh, I think it said NES, Super Nintendo, and Genesis, and uh, with adapters that are going to come out in the near future. So. Um, <laughs> It's it's pretty cool. It, it, it's a nice LCD screen for those old, you know, black and white Castlevania two Belmont's Revenge <laughs> and everything like that. Uh, so another cool console they have. But at least on. you can play this in the dark. That was always. Oh, my I'm big... sorry. This, this one, this one actually is going to be get an adapter to play 
um, Atari Lynx, Neo Geo Pocket Color, and Sega Game Gear games. I need something to play my Game Gear games. Yeah. Now we're talking because Game Gears are freaking going. Like the screens are going, the sounds going. Like they're not holding up as well as anything else right now. And it's hard to get. I have like two of them, and there's something different wrong with each one of them. It's kind of like the Sega CD problem we had, Katie. Yeah. So um, I think I had Lemmings. Was Lemmings on Game Gear? There was. There's definitely a Lemmings yeah. on Game Gear. I, like it, it I on, played that for days. It was on everything in the early 90s, wasn't it? Mm-hmm. So, um, I mean, it, yeah. So, um, so it's two hundred dollars by a company named Analog, and uh, it's a pretty nice little console from the looks of it. I mean, it looks like something that'll go right next to your 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 iPhone <laughs> with this. So, um, go look at that. I don't know about two hundred dollars, but it'd be nice to have a nice console to play some of our stuff. See how much these adapters are going to be when they come out. You got thirty-two you know. for that. What's that? You got thirty-two. Can we can't go to the thirty-two X? <laughs> Let's not do that to ourselves. Hey, the 32X, no, come on. The 32X still works. And the, uh, but I lost the one cord, so I have to bring the audio out through my, um, through the headphone jack on my old school Genesis. So <laughs> it's like, it's such a weird, like, like I have my Genesis, it's hooked up. I can play my, my Knuckles Chaotix or my Star Wars Arcade, but I gotta be plugged in with like my earbuds you know, and close enough to the Genesis to do it. Thankfully, I have things kind of set up in a small room. Uh, it's it's very, very... Thank you, thank you, headphone jack on the Genesis. Um, no thank you, all your weird add-on mechanicians. They're freaking weird. Uh, Chilla, Carmen, do you have anything else you want to touch on? Touch on? Oh, talk about the skin. <laughs> no, I was gonna, <laughs> is there any... Porn news because I was going to try no. to segue from military grade floppies. No, no. absolutely okay. not. I'm very sad. There is nothing going on. Pornhub uh, hasn't put out their Halloween list. This is going to be porn news. Yes. Uh, so this will be my prediction for this year that this will be porn news. Uh, research has researchers have created an artificial skin that makes your phone ticklish, um, <laughs> among other things. It, you can you can pinch it, you can squeeze it if you're angry. Um, it's, it looks like skin. It's like a skin case. It's gross. Um, it doesn't have a, a lot of hell? useful features right now. It's just like wrapped around the phone. Yeah. Right now. I mean, it's, it's all a prototype. What I if think. devices were covered in artificial skin? Yeah. What if it doesn't need to be so realistic looking, but it is right now. But I believe that the realism will come in handy, mm -hmm. uh, for Pornhub and, uh, and their associated sites. Always, oh, they're definitely petting it and tickling, mm -hmm. and it pops up. Yeah, something to do with your other head. Um, <laughs> okay. Uh, so, but so, what is the practical application for this? See, I don't want to get too into that. Uh, okay. What is the for, right now? What is the scientific <laughs> application for this? Right now, I think it's uh, it's using robotics uh, for safety. Okay. Um, for sensing capabilities, I, I would imagine to sense what is safe for a human mm. in an environment. Um, but yeah, I could see. I, I don't see a lot of practical applications for a phone case covered in it. But I mean, they're talking about being able to send emotions using your touch, mm -hmm. so squeezing to send anger. So for, this sounds like something that should be applied to like robots eventually. Well, in the sense, certain yeah, kind of it is. Or it is certain, applied to or robots. Or certain kinds of robots, very realistic robots. Right. That Like Terminator robots? No, no. Not. <laughs> no, we're not thinking those ones. No. Companions. Not robots that kill you. <laughs> but those that keep you company. <laughs> right. Uh, but I, I think what they're what they're experimenting with now is using it, using these to send sensations to another user. Mm-hmm. Uh, to another interface, um, so you can see where that would go from there. Mm -hmm. Use your imagination. Right. Um, interesting. Interesting. We'll have a link for that so you guys can see the creepy, creepy video. Uh, <laughs> so, uh, well, I guess on that note, as <laughs> I don't know why my document keeps closing. Thank you, Google Docs. Um, on that note, guys, I think that's all we we need to touch on today um stay tuned of course uh we will have uh pittsburgh current will be in here again on thursday morning and actually speaking of which you can check my new wrestling column currently wrestling over there at pittsburghcurrent.com that'll be a, a bi-weekly is that is that the right term every two weeks bi-weekly 
Yeah. It, that feels right. Every two weeks or twice a week. Or twice a week? It, it goes either. either way? It means either, yeah. It means the one that's less work for me. Mm-hmm. Yay, English language. <laughs> <laughs> right. So, uh, buy with a key out there. It'll be in the print edition, I understand, uh, starting with the next edition coming up, uh, which I think it drops next Tuesday. So uh, i got to get writing myself uh, with updates around what's going on around here. Uh, anything uh, coming up? Well, Carmen, what are, you, what are you up to? Uh, nothing much. Um, I'm going to buy this. Uh, I did buy this pizza book, and I'm going to immediately, after the show, eat some slice on Broadway. Fantastic. And say, yes, you're right. What? Yes, the book is right. This book, the book is correct. You're a correct book. <laughs> Where can people find you online? Um, Carmen Avenue on Twitter. And um, you can put uh, Pizza Walk with me uh, for my link because actually... I was in at least one of those uh, pizza journalism articles. Really? Yeah, I accompanied Dan to uh, to, to one of those interviews. Nice. Katie, Dutters. Hi. What do you want to plug this week? I don't know. Zombie Den. Zombie Den! Yay, I'll have my zombie out there Thursday night and Friday night. I need to get down there. And then Saturday he'll be at Night Market. And then wherever else we decide to show up. Where's a, is that at Market Square? Yeah. Okay. It's Friday up night. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. Mm-hmm. Swing down there for that stuff. Mm-hmm. And uh, here, are, of course, the K Dutters on the tweets. Tweets is. And, and you can see me failing to uh, plan surprise birthday parties on Twitter. Oh, yeah, that's true. Yeah, that's a thing. That really <laughs> got. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, hey, check your windows. And, you know, I looked and I was like, hey, that's okay, that's the one that has Katie's face on it because uh-huh. I'm in Messenger and I didn't notice. That her face was right beside yours because it's doing that overlap thing the way Messenger works now. And I'm just like, oh, no, you're here, too. Oh, no. We're not talking about you. We're talking no, about a different Missy. Just ignore birthday. us. Just ignore us. John Chichilla. At Chill on the Twitters. John Chichilla on the Facebook. You got a, I love the DVD ended behind you that we're testing. Yeah. You got a wonderful guy just looking over your shoulder. <laughs> just oh. uh, <laughs> <laughs> happy Halloween, Chilla. <laughs> Uh, thank you. Check out everything at awesomecast.com, sorgatronmedia.com. We just dropped um, uh, Bardic Mystery Tour. Uh, we just dropped in the feed today uh, their latest travels in their uh, Dungeon and Dragon podcast. Our friends at Thrifty Podcast sporting the Thrifty Podcast today. Go get their merch. But here, God bless you. God bless you. Let's have sneeze. Um, and uh, a lot of other fun stuff going on there. Of course, a lot of wrestling podcasts, sports podcasts. And of course, Pittsburgh Current, and uh, and 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 I hear there might be a podcast coming out. I just got a we saw I saw a tweet about Broadcast 2.0 coming out, returning. Mm-hmm. Our friend Kim Lyons is hitting up, and we're we're uh, looks like that's going to be spinning up soon. So look for that to return. And hi, mom, in the chat room. Thank you everybody for joining us. Thank you, producer Missy and uh, Mike, still here, <laughs> hanging out, learning all the buttons. And stuff and all this stuff that I keep accidentally closing and turning off. Uh, We'll see you guys next time. You've been our awesome audience. Have an awesome week. This show is a member of the Sorgatron Media Podcast Network. Find out more at sorgatronmedia.com.